Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to today's session about Beyond HPC with BGFS performance considerations to set up a parallel file system. We are going to talk about the sizing and the tuning of BGFS, the hardware BGFS is running on and the underlying file system under BGFS or which BGFS is using. And we are going to show some benchmark results and of course, we are going to show what benchmarking tools are available, external or internal to BGFS. We are ThinkBackQ. We are a spin-off of the Fraunhofer Center for High Performance Computing. ThinkBackQ established itself in 2014. We are very proud to have five rankings in the top 20 of the IO500 list. That is from uh, 18th of November last year. And we have been awarded with the HPC wire for best storage product or technology award in the year 2019, something we are very proud of. First of all, some definitions. Sizing. We mean with sizing the design of a system to meet a list of requirements, which may or may not include performance, scalability, availability, and cost. <clears throat> and with tuning, we mean that you have a given system and you are trying to get the best performance, scalability, or availability from the system you have. Uh, both sizing and tuning have some benchmarking in common. Let's talk about the service requirements of the BGFS services. The BGFS services are management service, metadata service, and the storage service. The, from these three services, the management service has the least requirements of all. It just needs about a little more than one megabyte of storage space. It does not need a significant amount of RAM and the CPU load is negligible. So typically the management services run uh, installed on an operating system partition so that the faster disks for metadata and storage are used ex exclusively for the given services and which means you don't have to have a dedicated management server. The metadata service has some stronger requirements uh, usually you have to ha need to have a single or dual socket CPU with uh, lots of cores. Um, if you have uh, more cores, then you can run more working threads in parallel, which makes your system faster. Uh, the RAM of the system is used for caching by the metadata daemon. So it is advised to have much of RAM. The more RAM, the better. So if you're going to have about 128 gigabyte, you're usually on the safe side. And the network has to be a low latency, fast network with a high throughput, which usually means that you're going to use InfiniBand or something like that. The storage, ta the storage for the metadata daemon uh, has to be RAID protected, but please avoid RAID 5 or RAID 6 because you have the write overhead with the parity update, which slows down the disks for the write performance. And usually it is a RAID 1 or a RAID 10 choice with Today, 
with SSD or NVMEs because of the better write performance. With NVMEs, you are usually go with a software rate solution. Uh, with rate one or rate 10, you can use an MD rate with an XFS or X4 file system, or you can use a so, um, ZFS as file system, which is built in rate features. Um, for the capacity of the disks you need for the metadata daemon, it's a rule of thumb to use about 0.5% of the sto total storage space of the storage daemon. This means, as an example, if you have 100 terabyte for the storage daemon, then you can, can estimate that you need about 500 gigabyte for the metadata daemon. The storage service um, is uh, in CPU terms not as demanding as the metadata daemon because if you have a hardware rate or infinity band, there is no high CPU load observed. Of course, if you are going to use a software rate for the storage disks, then you might need a more stronger CPU with more cores because the software rate has to be constantly use, has constant use of CPU power to calculate its parity and anything like that. Like with the metadata daemon, RAM is used for caching. So it's the same here. The more you have, the better you go. Network has the same requirements as the metadata network has to be low latency and high bandwidth, which usually means infinity band, because there's a lot of communication between the storage daemon and the metadata daemon. And to have a very good performance, you need a very fast network. The storage targets for the, which means the disks the storage daemon is writing on, uh, we advise to use a RAID protection with RAID 6 as the most common choice because you have two parity disks and you can survive the failure of two disks at the same time. If you have small writes, then around six disks, or if you have large writes, then you can use 12 disks. Uh, RAID chunk size 128 to 512 depending what controller you're using. If you are using SSDs or NVMEs for the storage targets, then of course you have no RAID controller. You are using a, a software RAID solution for the RAID protection, which means uh, if you are using a RAID 6 software RAID, we advise to use uh, ZFS as a file system because the Linux software rate, the MD rate, is terribly slow in a RAID 6 configuration and you'll lose a lot of performance if you're going to use this. Now for the external benchmarking tools, you can run these benchmarks before you set up your DGFS file system, which means you have your hardware ready, you have the operating system installed, you may or may not have the hard disk formatted and with a file system, be it XFS or ZFS. And now you can run some benchmarking tools to see what the raw performance of the system is and, and if the raw system without DGFS is meeting the requirements you have on the performance. And for this, you can use IO zone, MD test, IOR, or FIO. TKPerf is some graphical extension of the FIO benchmark. So it's not a benchmarking tool itself. It relies on FIO to prove the, uh, to give some results. As you see, with I also, you can see the local file system performance. You are going to write into the local file system. 
you can see some controller issues if you're going to have a hardware rate controller. Else you see the performance of the system. I also is usually not included in the repositories of Red Hat or SUSE. So you have to download the source code of IOSO and compile it to, which is quite easy. And then we can run IOSO on the file system with several command line arguments to fit your needs and your system. Uh, the next is the flexible I.O. tester, which is the called FIO. FIO is included in the Red Hat repositories and in the SUSE repositories. So you just type yum install FIO if you are going using a Red Hat or a CentOS system and the benchmark is going to be installed. You can run few on raw block devices like dev sdb without any file system or you can have a file system performance test uh, depending on the arguments you are giving on the command line. The first argument is dash dash rw which means are you going to have a read write test? Are you going to use just a write test? You have rent write, read write. You can write a small script which is using all arguments so you have a complete setup of benchmark results. If you're going to use the file system as a performance and you have a uh, few is using a file in the file system which you call in this time uh, example we call it dash dash name. It's the name of the file. It's called test and you say the size in this example it's one gigabyte. With dash dash direct, you say that you want to have direct I.O. onto the disk so you don't have any caching. And of course, you can define the block size. And then you run the test and you have this result written here with the I.O.s, the I.O.ps, and of course, the read and the write performance for the FIO benchmark. The IOR is used for the performance of data streaming. And because of that, you're going to start the IOR on the system where the BGFS client is running. If you have a dedicated client system and it's writing to the BGFS file system, that of course means that you have a network connection. And then you can see the maximum throughput through the network and you can test the network uh, speed if it is right for your expectations. The MD test is used for metadata throughput. It's creating a lot of files on the system and you can see how much the files it's creating in a, a given set of time. Usually, if you're going having a high performance computing system with, say, hundreds of clients, then the MD test is start with the MPI scheduler. So it's started in parallel on many clients to stress the system and to see the throughput if many clients are going to write to the storage and to the metadata daemon. Of course, BGFS needs an underlying file system. The most commonly used file systems are XFS and ZFS. So yeah, there are some hints how to compile or how to format XFS and mount the file system. So first you have to align your partitions to the disks. If you have shared disks, for instance, then you can say with the formatting of the disks with mkfs.xfs, you can see the inode size and the other arguments, and of course, the device you're going to use. And with the mount options, use no A time, no DRA time with BGFS because BGFS is no 
using both a time and here a time you can have the log size and the log buffer size which is very sensible for the queuing and makes more efficiently uh, file directory operations you can increase the alloc size to reduce fragmentation risks and of course there's one one small line for xfs if you are using X4 with the metadata, like it is recommended in certain wikis or um, documentations of BGFS. Uh, compile it with a large number of inodes, more inodes than the default setting for X4, because metadata daemon is writing a lot of small files which use lots of inodes but need very little space. And if you're running out of inodes, then the file system is going to a halt. And as a result, metadata is going to a halt and the cluster is going to a halt. And the only way to increase the number of inodes in an X4 file system is to extend the size of the file system, which may not be possible. In this case, you have to back up all the data in your X4 file system and reformat the disks with the number, with a sufficient number of inodes and then restore all the data, which is a little time consuming. And of course you have a out time of your um, BGFS cluster, which is not desirable. Uh, ZFS has is widely used on BGFS clusters. It is not part of the Red Hat or SUSE repositories. It is now part of uh, Ubuntu 20.4 uh, 20.04, but for Red Hat, SUSE, or CentOS, you have to download the sources from ZFS on Linux.org, and then you have to compile the sources to get ZFS running. If you have several storage servers uh, you want to use ZFS as this advice to build RPM packages for your environment so it's easier to distribute ZFS in your systems. Uh, keep in mind that if you're going to have or you're having a kernel update it may be that the kernel module you have compiled is no longer working this in your kernel so you have to rebuild the kernel module, which of course leads to a timeout of the BGFS cluster because you're not able to mount the ZFS file system until you have rebuilt the kernel modules. If you are going to use ZFS as a RAID set or RAID 6, RAID set 2 for the storage devices, Please don't use it with more than six disks because you have a performance degradation if you're using more than six disks. Align your partition properly. For formatting, it's just set pool create, red set two, and then the disks you're going to use. Uh, in this example, the set pool is called vault and it's automatically mounts at slash vault. For tuning options, you can set the tuning options online with the running file system. For instance, set compression off and of course set turn off deduplication because it's time consuming processes and it slows down your system. Set a time off, which is, as we know, not used by BGFS. And of course, set X actual attributes off as well. The record size is the equivalent of the chunk size. So you have to check that out. You have to have to do benchmarking with a given record site and then change record site and do the benchmark again to see if you have an improvement or a degradation of your results. And depending on set on your results, you have to set the record size. A built-in benchmarking tool is the storage bench from BGFS. It's called BGFS-CTL-Storage Bench. 
you have the you can choose between a write or a read benchmark you can set the block size the size of the file the storage bench is going to create the number of threads and the stash dash all targets you tell the storage bench that it's running on all storage targets defined in the BGFS cluster at once. Um, storage bench takes some time and it is running in the background. And after the running, you can see the benchmark results, which are called this max throughput, minimum throughput. It, uh, you see the node ID and the target ID, which the maximum and the minimum throughput the average throughput and of course the aggregated throughput on all storage devices in a BGFS cluster. So you set up your cluster, everything is looking fine and you run your first benchmark and the results are devastating. So what you have to do is tune it. Well, of course, this session is about tuning. And our recommendation at this point is the system BIOS, formatting, mounting, I.O. scheduler, the controller, concurrency, caching, network setting, and data striping patterns. For the tuning of the local disks, use and block devices, pick a good I.O. scheduler for NVMEs, we have found the loop or the deadline scheduler have to deliver the best results and adjust the number of schedulable requests on your disks. That is something you have to tinker the system a little bit. So change the number, run the benchmark change again, uh, set a read ahead and set the maximum I.O. size of the disk to fit your hardware. Same is for memory management, file system cache, kernel memory. These are some things you can tune as well. Like I said, change some, um, something change the value and then do a benchmark again and see if the changing of the value has, has some improvement as a result. And always change on only one at a time because if you have a better result as a benchmark, then you don't know which change was the cause for the improvement. Of course, the system BGFS has some tuning options as well. For the BGFS metadenon, you can say, tune the max connections with the worker threads, the default is 32, and tune the number of workers that are running in parallel. The default value is zero. It is uh, advised to use twice the number of CPU cores um, same is for the feature of a storage to tune the max connection between internodes and of course you can tune the number of workers which are default is 12 per target which means per storage target if you have more than one storage target on one server then it's sensible not to touch this with the meta data, you can choose or say how the files are distributed on the storage devices. They can be distributed randomized or round robin, uh, which means if you have several storage targets, 101, 201, or 301, if you have randomized um, setting, then they are distributed as the name says, randomized on all storage target with round robin setting, you can see that it's starting with 101 going to 202, 203, 301 with a round robin feature. And of course, you can use 
when tune the starter striping on a DGFS file system with the set pattern argument, you can define a different chunk size. You can set the number of targets. The default um, is four. If you have large files, it may be sensible to have more than four targets. Or if you have storage pool that you can say, okay, the certain files are written into certain storage pools. And with small files are just only in one storage pool. This improves the performance of the system. And, and of course, you have to test it. Here are some results of, or here is an example of the system with a not so good choice for the metadata target with not so good rate array settings and no OS tuning and with proper tuning we are able to get the shimming benchmark, the IOR from 2.3 gigabyte per second to 3.6. And the metadata benchmark, we are more have been able to lower the time for uh, car file extraction from 12 minutes to three minutes. A rule of thumb for the benchmarking is or to set up or tune a BGFS system is that it is time consuming because you will have to change one argument at a time and run the benchmark again. The benchmark needs that time to run. So as a rule of thumb for tuning a BGFS system, it may take about a week to have the optimum out of a running system. So don't say, okay, tuning is just one day or, and we are done. It's more than one day usually because of the many arguments you can change on the operating system, on the devices, and on BGFS as well. And they all are interconnected and working together and have dependencies. With that, I want to thank you for listening. I hope I can could, was able to show you some ways to do on the BGFS file system and uh, if there are any questions, I'm quite happy to help you with that. We are in the question and answer session in a few minutes. Have a nice day.